like taking a lot of inspiration from the script and and starting uh, working on things before you actually see what they've done. A lot of it is based in Canary Wharf and it's bankers and it's insider trading and so it's money. We thought let's use money to make instruments with. Obviously you want something bespoke for this show and I guess the only real way of doing that sonically and musically is... Make your own sound. Exactly. Yeah. So that's what we did on this. Now we've got the dictaphone very close to this. And that put through a, a sampler and yeah. with a little bit of filter in and that very last bit when it was rotating around fast, that's how we made those rhythmical like you know, or even then just using a fraction of that uh, just to create these hi-hat like symbols. It may well have been this coin spinning in pounds that led on to uh, your walk. It's more of a kind of exploration of sound. So uh, using things that, <laughs> it might sound completely crazy and mad. The walk does resemble somewhat of a similar to a hang drum and playing it like an instrument. Oh, that sounds good. And, um, but it, we found out our walk is in B. Jokes aside of all these different yeah. elements, you know, it, everything was just, uh, I guess, we're just looking for realism and anything that really makes a sound. The reality of all this is that to create something interesting, you, you don't need to be confined by using big orchestras or us trying to create a sound world for this show and by looking around and sounds that we can create and turn into instruments is, you know, everyday things. But then when you hear it in the show, you know, you wouldn't really expect it and how we've treated it. Yeah, to get away from a traditional approach, like you're saying, mm. with that in mind, I'm just like, right, you know, the, the kitchen's the drum kit, let's, let's, <laughs> let's get the sound. It became massive. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got uh, the kitchen drum kit. You know, we were just looking for something that would be, I guess, percussive and something that's really got quite a lot of meat. And so the first protocol was like the oven door. Um, <laughs> It was a pretty decent kind of snary sort of sound. Not to go over analytical about the draw, but the fact that it contains a lot of cutlery gave a really good ring to it. Then, so we recorded that, and then what else did we do? We did the fridge as did well. Did the fridge, the don't, fridge. For, don't forget the fridge. The fridge door, so the fridge yeah. door, I think, became our kick drum. <laughs> when we sort of collate all these sounds and then suddenly put them into contact, it suddenly made us, gave us our sort of, Quite nice reverberant kitchen drum kit. This is the kitchen. And the coins became like hi hats. And it kind of does the same thing as a cymbal does, doesn't it, without the initial sort of attack? Exactly. Sometimes stretching like a coin spinning would be like the same as a cymbal splashing. Adding in the coins to the equation. And for us, that was like quite a, a moment of like inspiration when that worked <laughs> and it thought wow that's like a huge drum kit i, I think you know the record producers would spend a lot of time getting a <laughs> drum kit to sound like that <laughs> we did some interesting recordings of this really old piano to make some interesting pad sounds and and all we did was just record four times just these octaves just <laughs> and so then by then we had like eight recordings all laid on top of each other. Basically made piano drones out of these, these sounds. And really don't sound like pianos at all. 
you know, because we're trying to think about how can we make pads, and, and so, you know, you've kind of got quite a unique sounding pad that's basically just made from a piano, and Paul Stretch is such an amazing device to sort of basically elongate a sound, and we used it in a very simplistic way. It helped us create a nice bed, and then from that, we kind of, by using like a tremolo plugin as well, Again, making a new sort of sound, but all coming from this organic source. Really, that's like the fulcrum of where everything else sort exactly, of comes yeah. from. It's worked for us, hasn't it, as a technique to do maybe it's the most important scene first. Exactly, yeah. And then if you, if you nail that, yeah. then you know I mean, where you're, where, what you're building from. It's sort of encouraged us to look elsewhere for sounds and it was, you know, one thing just leads to the next and we just think, okay, yeah, well, what sure. else can we create? What else can we make? Peter's got some interesting methods of creating some interesting sounds and there was a sound called, we called the shimmer. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's an open tuning on a guitar. So you would tune the guitar string so it sounded like, a, like a, an E major chord, which is that. And to get the shimmer, use something just to vibrate over the strings of the 12th fret, which gives you the E major chord, and this is what it sounds like. Of which then Paul, Paul, Paul stretched it. Exactly, yes, uh, because it has a slow attack. I think I start the sample somewhere in the middle, yeah. This angelic like pad, and you know, because we did majors and minor versions as well. Again, it's us reaching for something that wasn't an out of the box pad. The simplicity of recording the samples of all these um, coins being sp spun in pans, etc. I've got a dictaphone here, so it's it's just stereo mics. It's as simple as you like. But really great quality, and I was really surprised actually. I, when I asked you, like, oh, "Why do you record these?" Yeah, on? The and then you pulled this out, and I thought, "Really?" The, the mics are really good. It made it so quick and and so simple to do this. I guess like not to overcomplicate anything. You know, we could have hired some expensive microphones and spent time positioning them in front of different elements, but just going around stuff quick. And uh, I think like even in an hour, we'd recorded so many different sounds, and then yeah, taking it from that, those raw recordings and then seeing what we can do with them.